Hello, and welcome to day 32 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the artist that I've done the study of today is Thomas Moran, and the name of the painting is Passing Shower. Um, Thomas Moran, uh, right off the bat, I just want to let you know, is not actually considered a tonalist painter. Um, he was considered to be a Hudson River school guy, or a luminist, or Rocky Mountain school. Um, he was an amazing painter, and uh, there is an entry on Wikipedia about him, which I'm going to uh, read to you now. Uh, Thomas Moran, February 12th, 1837 to August 25th, 1926. From Bolton, England, was an American painter and printmaker of the Hudson River School in New York whose work often featured the Rocky Mountains. Moran and his family took residence in New York, where he obtained work as an artist. He was a younger brother of noted marine artist Edward Moran, with whom he shared a studio. A talented illustrator and exquisite colorist, Thomas Moran was hired as an illustrator at Scribner's Monthly. During the late 1860s, he was appointed the chief illustrator for the magazine, a position that helped him launch his career as one of the premier painters of America of the American landscape. Moran, along with Albert Beardstadt, Thomas Hill, and William Keith are sometimes referred to as belonging to the Rocky Mountain School of Landscape Painters because of all the western landscapes made by this group. Uh, moving on to another site with some additional biographical information. Um, this is lucidcafe.com. Um, here it uh, says that he was the son of a handloom weaver. His family, including brothers Edward and Peter, immigrated to the United States in 1844. He grew up in Philadelphia, where he was apprenticed to a wood engraver, sketching designs on the blocks. His older brother, Edward, who was an established landscape painter, provided Thomas with his first art lessons. Moran worked initially with watercolor, but soon turned to oil. He exhibited his first oil in 1858 and made his first sketching trip westward in, eight, westward in 1860 to Lake Superior. He continued his studies with local artist James Hamilton, but in 1861-62 he returned to England with brother Edward where they fell under the influence of J.M.W. Turner. While copying his works, Moran went while copying his works, excuse me. Moran went to Europe again in 1866-67, meeting other, another influence, Corot, and making studies of Venice. In 1871, Moran found the subject matter for the rest of his life when he made his first trip to the West. He was to work in Yosemite the following year, where additional visual impressions became the backdrop for many of his future works. His first trip was to Yellowstone, by the way. Moran continued to travel almost every year to the most notable locations in Colorado, New Mexico, Florida, Arizona, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Europe, and Mexico. He would return to his studio successively in Philadelphia, Newark, Long Island, and Pasadena, and finally Santa Barbara, to paint from the many sketches he made during his travels. When Moran was just 36, he painted the Grand Canyon of the Colorado, which, brought Congre which Congress bought along with the Yellowstone painting for $10,000 each in 1873. $10,000 was big money back then. Moran's style is often likened to Turner and sometimes to Corot. His versatility and technical correctness enabled him to adopt the characteristics of many masters. A master of composition and pictorial effectiveness, his paintings are smooth and glossy to the point of resembling a mechanical print. In contrast to Beardstadt and Thomas Hill, Moran's western paintings with a distinctive monogram developed in 1873 and the thumbprint affixed from 1911 remained in demand during his entire career. He remains internationally famous for his panoramic landscapes of Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. Mount Moran and the Tetons and Moran Point in Yosemite are both named after him. Moran painted his emotions as landscape. Here's a quote. I place no value upon literal transcriptions from nature. All my tendencies are towards idealization. 
A place as a place has no value in itself to the artist. While I desire to be truly to I desire to tell truly of nature, I do not wish to realize the scene literally, but to convey its true impression. Still debunking modern art, at his deathbed at ninety he saw his own yet to be painted landscapes on the ceiling and talked to them. Moran died in Santa Barbara in nineteen twenty six. Well, and the, we've this is quite a long video um, for us, and uh, I put quite a lot of polish and finish into this study. Um, this is one of the better, the better pieces in my view, at least one of the ones that I really, really like. And uh, uh, for that reason, I think you can see this is probably the longest video uh, of the entire collection of studies that were done. Um, I uh, think Thomas Moran is an amazing artist and he actually transcends any genre. Um, as I stated at the beginning, he's not exactly a tonalist, but he certainly embraced tonalist tendencies. He was a master draftsman, a master colorist, and a master portrayer of emotion. And uh, if you're not familiar with his work, um, I suggest you uh, start Googling and uh, get a look at what it is he did and one of the reasons that he was so successful for his entire life. Um, I can say we're getting to the end so if you'd like to see more of my work go to landscapepainter.co.nz and we'll see you tomorrow for day 32. Meanwhile stay out of trouble.